By now you should know how to use McCabe Tilly's graphical method to solve distillation problems. Let's now talk about four different things. The minimum reflux ratio, which we have talked about before, the minimum number of equilibrium stages needed to achieve a certain separation, that we have talked about before as well, and then the capital expenditure and the operating expenditure, so how much it costs to actually build this stuff and keep it running. So we start with the minimum reflux ratio. So if you draw a solution in, in a McCabe Tilly graphical method way, you have an operating line, and if you change the reflux ratio, you change the slope of the upper operating line. So what happens if you decrease the reflux ratio? Well, after a point you reach a certain limit where you get a, an infinite number of equilibrium stages. And that's the minimum reflux ratio. So the smaller the reflux ratio, the higher number of equilibrium stages you need, right? And just keep in mind that uh, this point where you actually get an infinite number, if you have a simple system curve, you find that point simply by drawing the Q line to the, to the system curve and then drawing the upper operating line through that intersection. But if you have a bumpy uh, system curve uh, with an inflection on it, uh, then you can actually get the point for an even higher uh, reflux ratio than that. Okay, but what if I instead increase the reflux ratio? Well, the highest you can increase it is to simply put back everything. So you have an infinite reflux ratio, everything goes back in, and no distillate is taken out. What you get then is that uh, the operating line goes down to the diagonal and you get the minimum number of equilibrium stages. Okay, so try to do to solve this now. In a diagram with number of uh, equilibrium stages needed on the y-axis and the reflux ratio on the x-axis, draw the number of equilibrium stages required as a function of the reflux ratio. So pause here and try to do that. So what do you get? Well, there are two important lines here that we can draw before we actually start drawing the function. One is the minimum reflux ratio. So that must be a vertical line in the diagram and we can't be on the wrong side of that. We can, can't have smaller reflux ratios than that. But we also know that we have a minimum number of equilibrium stages. So we have a horizontal line as well. And those two lines are asymptotes for the function we want to draw. And we won't do this carefully now, but let's just realize that for reflux ratios close to the minimum reflux ratio, we'll, we get infinitely many uh, equilibrium stages needed, and for an infinite uh, reflux ratio, we will instead get uh, a minimum, the minimum number of equilibrium stages needed. So the function will look something like this. Let's take this a step further. What does this actually mean? If you want to build this stuff, well, you have a capital expenditure and you have operating expenditure. The bigger thing you need to build, the more money it costs to invest in the stuff, right? And the more energy you need to use in the reboiler and in the condenser, the higher the operating expenditure. So try now to draw a diagram with instead the cost as the y-axis and still the reflux ratio as the x-axis and try to draw now the expenditure, how much money you need to pay, uh, capital expenditure and operating expenditure and then try to sum these up to a total expenditure. So try to do that, see what you find out.
Did you manage to solve this? In this course, uh, it's meant as a difficult question, but it's good if you try this hard yourself to see if you understand how, how these things work. Let's start with the operating expenditure. So we have a minimum reflux ratio, this vertical line in the diagram. So what does that tell us? It tells us something about what happens in the reboiler and what happens in the condenser. So there is a certain fraction of what the vapor that comes up to the condenser that must be condensed uh, and fed, fed back to the column for this to work. I mean, you have to have uh, gas and liquid all over uh, in all places of the distillation column. But the more you feed back, the more you need to reboil. Uh, so at this limit, the minimum reflux ratio, you have a certain energy use in the reboiler and in the condenser. When you start increasing the reflux ratio, that amount increases. What this means is that if you look at an individual molecule, uh, it will on average have spent more time in the distillation column, uh, the higher you put the reflux ratio. So the higher the reflux ratio, the higher the flows will be in the column, and the higher the energy ne is needed in the, both the reboiler and the condenser. So it should be an increase. What about capital expenditure. If we start again at R min, the minimum reflex ratio, we know that if we want to build a distillation column that works at the minimum reflex ratio, we need to make it infinitely high. We need to have an infinite number of stages in there, uh, equilibrium stages, and thus also an infinite number of physical trays in there. And that will, of course, increase the cost, right? The more trace you need to, to have, the higher the ca capital expenditure, the more money you need, need to put into iron or whatever you make this off. Okay, but on the other hand, if you increase the reflux ratio, we just said that that will increase the flows in the column, right? And if you increase the flows, they will take up more space. So at the minimum reflex ratio, we have a, a column that is, is narrow. It, its volume doesn't have to be so big, or a transaction area doesn't have to be so big, but it, the height need to be infinite. And then we increase the reflex ratio and we need to build the not so high tower anymore, not so high distillation column, but the more we increase the reflux ratio, the wider we need to make this stuff. And after a while, we come to a point where the cost starts to increase and we get an infinite number of costs. I mean, if you, if you have total reflux, if the reflux ratio is infinite, then the volume needs to be infinite, right? because there is nothing coming out. You just pour in stuff and nothing comes out. So the, the volume has to be infinite. And that will have an uh, infinite uh, capital expenditure then. So we know that we start uh, on an infinite value and we know that we end at an infinite value. And somewhere along that, there is a minimum in the capital expenditure. And if you put these two together, the capital expenditure and the operating expenditure, you can actually find a, an optimal reflux ratio where the costs are the lowest. We won't do any calculations like that in this course, but I think you should know that there is uh, an optimal um, reflux ratio where the costs are lowest. The problem in finding that is that you need to know the operating costs and uh, capital expenditure uh, to, to get to that. Uh, and you need to compare payments you do now, investments you do now, with costs you have later. 
Uh, I mean, the operating expenditure you have all the time. Every day you run the, uh, this facility, you have it. But the capital expenditure, you typically have one point in time and then you have a lifespan of, of the equipment. And the actual uh, lifespan of the equipment is typically much longer than the economical uh, lifespan. So what we typically do in a factory is that we have, uh, for example, we, we can have a payback time and say that we need to all our investments to pay back in five years, for example. Or we could do it the other way around and say that we have, we calculate with interest rates uh, how we can spread it out and investments over time.